Hello, my name is Will Carmack, and in today's After Effects tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to remove wires or anything in the background that you don't want there. I worked on a music video recently where the artist was suspended from a garage, and so I had to remove a harness in wires from like 30 different clips and really mastered the art of wire and background removal slash background replacement. Now, I actually made a tutorial on wire removal in 2023 using an effect called simple wire removal, but over time, I've slowly started to to hate that plugin and I'm gonna show you a way better way to do this effect. So this is the best way in 2025 to remove wires and objects from the background. And before we get started, I have to let you know that this video is sponsored by my sugar daddy, Squarespace. So here we are in After Effects, you can see my artist here is floating in the air, but the original footage actually looked like this. Isn't that crazy? He's just hanging from a harness, but then after all of my work, he's literally floating. So we'll get the boring and first part out of the way. So what we're gonna do to start is we'll take our character and we're just gonna duplicate the original footage. And if we come up to the rotoscope tool, since we're eventually gonna replace the things behind him, what we need to do is mask him out. So whatever clip you're trying to remove stuff from the background, the first step is always masking out your character. Unfortunately for me, this character was wearing the craziest pants in the entire world to mask. But once you have your mask, we'll go down here where it says freeze and freeze our mask. And so we have something like this, a beautiful mask of our character floating. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a frame where he is intruding on the background the least amount. Like right here, I get a lot of window. Now here's the smart part. What we're gonna do is go to composition, save frame as and file. We're gonna go to our render queue here in After Effects and our output module, we're gonna just keep it as a Photoshop sequence and we'll just hit render. So now if we drop down this output module, we can just select where this is in our, in our Explorer. Right here, we have wire removed from this picture. I'm gonna double click on this Photoshop file. So once you have your photo opened in Photoshop, because of the new generative AI technology, we're just gonna remove everything we don't want. So I'm gonna unlock our background here and I'm gonna grab the pin tool and I'm gonna select the harness and all of its surrounding accoutrement. I'm even gonna mask out our character here. And if you've created multiple masks like I have here, just hold down Control and Shift as you're clicking on all the different pin selections. We're gonna right click, make selection, it really doesn't matter what the feather is. And I'm just going to go down here to generate fill and click on it and hit generate. And then just like that, everything we want removed is removed. And you can just pick which part of the Photoshop that you like. It gives you multiple options. And I am super happy with this. And now what we're gonna do is go to File, Export, and Export As. I'm gonna save it as a JPEG. Just make sure it's the highest possible resolution. And save it somewhere that you'll remember. So we can bring back After Effects. And before we bring in the photo, let's, let's right click on our masked out character really quick. And we're just going to hit Marker and Add Marker. So we know that that's the frame that we created our layer. So I'm gonna grab my Photoshop file where we got rid of everybody and I'm gonna bring it into our composition. And I'll bring it underneath of our mask. Obviously right now this looks a little wonky, but bear with me. So for now, I'm actually gonna make this layer invisible. So now what I'm gonna do is you see all these different little marks on the ceiling. I'm gonna go to the tracker panel. I'll select on my original layer and in the tracker panel, I'm gonna go to track motion and I'm going to select rotation and scale. So right here, I have these two pretty good markers that I can use for tracking. And once you've got your tracking marker selected, let's just analyze forward or analyze backwards depending on where your thing was. So now you see we have this great tracking data and I'm gonna to go to layer, new, and null object. And we're gonna edit the target to be the null object we just created, which for me is null number 24. We're gonna hit okay, apply, and okay. So now you see we have our tracking data. So we're gonna to go to the marker um, in the composition where we have, where we made our original freeze frame. And what we're gonna do is we're going to link this background to our null 24. So now you can see our invisible slate is moving around with us. So I'm actually just gonna lower the opacity of this clip to see where the harness is. And I'm just gonna create a mask on our Photoshop file around everything I wanna get removed. And since we tracked the ceiling, let's forget about this wire on the right side for now. And we kinda want as much as the original 
uh, background as possible. So I'll make my mask around the harness and bring the opacity back up to 100. And if I hit M to drop down the mask, I'm just gonna feather this out. So now if you watch that back, our basically our clean slate is tracked onto the ceiling. And so now you can see right here, you can't even see the wire. You can see right there, I accidentally feathered it too much and the harness peeks behind her mask. So if that happens, just make your mask selection wider. We're just gonna bring this behind the dude as much as possible. And then bam, we've gotten rid of the harness that's behind him without having to use a simple wire removal tool. Just Photoshop generated a fill and a really good track. So because this wire isn't necessarily attached to the ceiling and we tracked the ceiling, this isn't gonna be a smooth mask. So what I'm actually gonna do for a small wire like this, this is super important. There's two ways to get rid of things in the background. I just showed you the first way, which is tracking in basically a clean slate that you created in Photoshop. But something like this, where there's no single point that you can necessarily track, what I'm gonna do is is go to layer, new, and solid. And I'm gonna make it invisible for now. And I'm going, on the black solid, I'm just gonna create a mask around where the wire is in the scene. I'll hit my mask options so I can create a mask path to follow where the wire is over time. And so now we have this wire completely masked out on our solid. So we'll turn that visible. And on our original clip, we're gonna grab the track matte pick whip and attach it to the black solid. And so now, with this beautiful hole we've created, we can go over to the content aware panel, panel on the right. We can select object, lighting compensation, and we'll do generate fill. And now we just wait until it's complete. And bam, just like that, it got rid of the wire so you can go through the whole scene and now you've completely gotten rid of the harness. And so now where there once was a harness is just a man floating in the sky. And so that is the best way to get rid of wires and stuff in the background. You can use Photoshop to generate a brand new background and track it behind your mask. And then instead of simple wire removal, you can just create a mask around a wire and then use and then use content aware fill to fill up that hole. I did that with over 30 shots in this music video and it worked every single time. If you have any editing questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll respond to anybody with a question. And if you wanna see the music video, I'll link that in the description as well. And now that you know how to get rid of anything in the background of your videos, maybe you can help me out by supporting my incredible sponsor, Squarespace. I have to introduce to you Squarespace's design intelligence. You might not know this about me, but I have the biggest collection of vintage life magazines in the world. And I wanna create a site showing off this American history in a really pretty way. And so with Squarespace's design intelligence, I can create a website that looks perfect and vibey. So with these vintage magazines, maybe some cool vintage looking shapes to show off some covers a nice color scheme that really matches the dark tones of these magazines. And if I need some assistance, they have award-winning templates. So I actually have a lot of duplicates of these vintage magazines and I wanna sell them as collector's items to other people. And what's amazing about that is Squarespace has online stores you can create. So if you have products, whether that's jewelry, plants, vintage magazines, you can create a beautiful online store with Squarespace. And even better, Squarespace Payments is endless. They have all the popular payment methods like Klarna and Afterpay, all the buy now, pay later options. And if you don't think Squarespace is incredible yet, well, how about the fact that they gave me a code to give you for 10% off your first website or domain. So go get a discount on creating a website that will bolster your image as a professional. Really anybody can benefit from having an amazing website. So build it with Squarespace. Where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will and have a nice day.